Welcome back my dear listeners. We are on episode 65. Today we will talk about my adolescence and the new world of junior college. My parents' response to my adolescence was to get stricter, to shame me for the changes my body was going through and to generally make me feel more self-conscious and confused than I was already feeling. One instance of this was when I tried to pay attention to my grooming after our school screened an educational promotional video by a sanitary pad manufacturer. At the end of the video we were handed out little booklets with generic tips on handling adolescence. I read the booklet sincerely and tried to follow the advice. Just as the booklet suggested, I tried to stay well groomed throughout the day. I would get home after school then wash my face with soap and then run a comb over my hair and apply perfume just as suggested this made my mom very furious and suspicious and she asked in a very threatening manner why i was doing that this intimidated me and i stopped doing it but i was too innocent to understand why my evening freshening up made my mom angry another time i was listening to some music and my dad said in a taunting manner even i was young once his tone was accusatory as though being young meant i had some inside secrets that i should be ashamed of i felt myself shrink when dad spoke to me like this ever since we were little we had had untrimmed super long hair since we were sick or sardars this hair was washed with life boy soap every sunday and then oiled in the evening Mom braided our hair every morning and then washed it again on Sunday. Since our hair was so long, mom would always wash it for us. This was a big Sunday chore for her or a routine whatever you choose to call it. Washing the soiled hair of three girls and then oiling it after it dried, detangling it and then braiding it in the evening on Sunday so that we were ready to face the week with our super long hair. This went on regularly every Sunday until suddenly one Sunday when I was probably 11 or 12 years old as usual I opened my braids in the bathroom undressed and called out to mom to come wash my hair for me she walked in then started scolding me saying sharam nahi aundi enni baddi ho gayi maa de samne nangi ho ke khadi ho jandi hai which means don't you feel embarrassed or shy or ashamed just standing naked in front of your mom i felt very confused and embarrassed and ashamed and awkward when mom said this it came out of the blue there had been no discussion no inkling that she felt this way i was just following the routine of several years i felt very hurt when mom sp- spoke to me like this I never again called her to help me wash my hair after this. It was no wonder then that I learned to hide things from my family. If such innocuous aspects of growing up were shamed and unacceptable to my parents and made them angry, then they would be even worse if I actually discussed my puberty and the resulting feelings with them. So I was alone in dealing with all that followed. So when my chest hurt when my breasts were budding I didn't tell anybody I just dealt with it myself Now when it came to academics my performance improved after my anemia had been addressed with supplements So I gave it my all because I was a people pleaser desperate to just make my parents say once that they were proud of me and they they seemed to ridicule whenever i would get an average score like oh tiny how much did you get this time oh 55% mhm so that was the kind of response i would get so when the anemia started getting better i gave it my all for academics but never did end up catching up with the top students though i improved so as 10th standard was approaching i created a summer holiday study schedule before the 10th standard even and i was very sincere in following it i wanted to give it my best like i wanted to give my all to 10th standard so that i could score the best possible score that i could ever have now having gotten 79% in my 10th board exams i was super proud of myself i had never gotten such amazing scores before 
I opted to study psychology. Ruby's school best friend was studying at Ruya College and informed me that I could study psychology there. At the time, I was not aware that psychiatry was a whole separate branch that required students to study science and then medicine. Had I known that, I might have made a more informed decision. I did not even know about other creative fields that I could have applied to. Like when one of my classmates, Anita, said she's going to do home science, I started laughing because I thought they're going to teach you how to manage your home. And I was like, really? Home science? What do they teach you? Ha ha ha. If I had known that home science was going to be so amazing and so creative, I might have considered it. But that was not even anywhere on the periphery of my awareness. So anyway, I went to Ruya College and got admission there. In Bombay, students at that time would go to junior college for 11th and 12th and then senior college for the undergrad course. We didn't have 11th and 12th in school. At the time, we had three streams for 11th standard, science, commerce and arts. Arts was supposed to be for the losers who didn't get admission anywhere else. So my dad tried to persuade me to also seek admission in Poddar College for Commerce. But mom dissuaded him since she'd heard stories of kids being very unhappy if they were forced to study something that they were not interested in. So mom could also be supportive and loving and understanding. The academics at Ruya, at least for the arts division, were a joke. They hired a psychology teacher who had no idea how to teach. To make things worse, she had a thick accent that made it very difficult to understand what she was saying. I would struggle to understand and quickly take down notes. We were very new to taking down notes since the school system was very different from college. I later identified her accent as the Bengali accent. And if I had any familiarity with it, I would have that would have made my life a lot easier. But having no prior exposure to the accent, I would take down what that teacher said verbatim and struggle to make sense of it. I would be like, what is she saying? I don't even know the words. The very first class, she kept referring to something as humane bing. She kept saying, and the humane bing. And I was like, oh my God, this is some new psychology concept. Kept wondering what it was. We didn't have Google to quickly find out what she might be talking about. It was mortifying to realize after a while that she was talking about human beings. Human beings! God! On my first day at Ruya, I quickly realized that anyone and everyone in my class already had at least one buddy to hang out with. It seems everyone joined the batch with prior classmates and friends. And I stood out like a sore thumb as the only person who was completely alone and friendless and the one who did not know anyone. I had thought everyone would be like just one, one person, nobody knows anybody and everybody would be trying to make friends. But no, when I saw everyone already had their little group for their friends and they were just hanging out with them. So this made me feel very uncomfortable and desperate to find some company. I latched on to two girls from Ghatkopar. They had been in the same school as each other and were best friends from there. They were pretty content just with each other and were not looking to make any friends. But being as desperate as I was, I insisted on imposing. So much so that when they sat at the classroom benches designed for two people, I insisted on sitting with them with half my butt hanging off the bench. For a couple of days they resisted, but then they just accepted me as their new friend. Then something happened. A girl walked up to me and asked me if I was tiny. I looked at this super glamorous, super cute girl. She looked like she was a model that had walked right out of a glam magazine with her fringe, pretty face and absolutely doll-like proportions, not to mention her trendy outfit. With my self-esteem being what it was, I was confused that this seemingly absolutely gorgeous girl even came close to me, leave alone was talking to me. I got flustered just as I did with when anyone that I thought was too good to talk to me came and talked to me. She identified herself as Daisy Balsara. I then remember her as my first standard friend from Udyachal school. 
I later found out that her dad had been fired from Godrej and that is why she did not continue studying at the Godrej school. Daisy was overjoyed to find someone she knew because she too was one person other than me who had joined the batch with zero friends. I promptly ditched my two Ghatkopar friends and started hanging out with Daisy. Daisy was not too good for my already sagging self-esteem. Because she was so cute, the next to her I looked like a wet dish rag. My mom had not bought me any new clothes for college. We were just supposed to wear the homestitch salwar kameez that we already had. And Ruby had already, when she started college, made a deal with us that we would all swap with each other so that at least when she had started college, she had more clothes than those four or five outfits. I had heard Supriya say that her aunt had sent her 5,000 rupees to shop for college clothes. And I could not even believe that people spent so much money shopping specially for college clothes. That concept was foreign to me. I was like, whoa, so her dad is not even an officer and yet she is getting special money to buy just college clothes. And later I found out even Daisy had gotten a whole wardrobe stitched by a tailor for college clothes, balloon skirts and whatnot, little cute jackets and stuff. And was I the only person who did not get a single new outfit when she joined college? When I had asked for a pair of jeans in 8th standard, my parents had taken me to a Ghatkopar Gully shop and gotten me a corduroy trouser, which they convinced me was a denim trouser. Other than that, they took me to Ghatkopar where I was allowed to choose one outfit for college. I selected a spray-painted yellow skirt and blouse that neither of my parents liked. The outfit was made of some weird, stretchy, t-shirty material and when it was washed, that skirt promptly became wonky, longer on one side. I had to keep wearing it like that because I wasn't getting any other clothes and I felt very self-conscious and odd wearing it. Plus my oily braids. I mostly wanted to stay invisible among all these trendy, glamorous, confident, good-looking college kids. Everyone was better groomed than me over there. I could not even believe that Daisy had approached me and I was very flattered that she considered me her friend. Guys were attracted to Daisy like bees to a flower. They flocked all around her. Seniors and like same age, all just all guys just flocking to her, requesting an introduction. I don't know why I thought it was my job to fight them off. I did not speak to Daisy about this, just assumed that it was unwanted attention. I remember one annoyed boy asking me, are you her bodyguard? And I answered, yes. At that time, I seemed to implicitly think that any boy who approached a girl was a creep and needed to be warded off. I thought I was being a loyal friend by shooing off the boys. Given this background, it was no wonder that I could not possibly imagine that anyone could be interested in me. To me, it would be similar to placing a pizza next to steamed vegetables. What would look attractive to an observer? Obviously, the pizza. I don't think anyone would even notice the vegetables. And even if they did notice the pathetic steamed veggies, they would pointedly ignore them. Or so I thought. Spending time with Daisy, I started observing her dressing and tried to imitate her. I already knew that any attempts to look good would be met with frowns from my parents. I had the experience of mom getting suspicious and angry just when I was washing my face and dad being sarcastic. So I decided to be sneaky about it. Daisy told me that after she left home, she would roll up her skirt at the waist to make it shorter. So I started doing the same. I saw how lovely Daisy's hair looked and how most girls in college had cute haircuts. So I started trying to avoid oiling my hair. Traditionally, in our Sardar household, we washed our hair once a week on Sundays. I now tried to surreptitiously wash my hair multiple times a week so that it would not be oily. When my mom forced me to braid it, I would open up the braids on the way to college. So I now had this secret second avatar where I tried to look trendy and glamorous. Little did I know that you can never run away from your background. Within, 
I was still this insecure, timid, ugly girl with a big bulbous nose who was stupid and clumsy and hard of hearing and who had not accomplished much and whose parents had no reason to be proud of her no matter how hard she tried. That is how I behaved and that is what I projected. It was no wonder then that I self-sabotaged whenever any opportunity presented itself. I'll tell you more about that in the next episode. Till then, stay healthy, stay happy. Bye for now.